Good morning and welcome back. So in New York, zoo officials trying to capture a Eurasian eagle owl. Yes, you heard that right. The owl escaped when its exhibit was vandalized Thursday night. Flacco, who was caught after he escaped, unfortunately, he flew off mid-rescue. Officials say the bird is a predator owl with a large wingspan and talons as sharp as razor blades. So there's no catching him unless he wants to be caught. Now, yesterday, he was actually spotted at a nature sanctuary in its Central Park. He was looking down on all the commotion that he himself was causing. Officials are asking park goers to give Flacco space so that he can, in fact, be rescued. Ladies, it's time to get in formation. That's because Beyonce's tour hasn't started, but fans are already demanding more performances. Queen Bey will perform in her hometown of Houston not just once, but twice. She's also scheduled to perform in Dallas on September 21st. Those Houston performances follow that on the 22nd and 23rd. The big question is, can Ticketmaster handle that high demand mm. for tickets? So people can start buying tickets in two days, but not all tickets will, will go up for sale at once. So in hopes of avoiding another meltdown, Ticketmaster plans to institute rolling sales dates depending on the city. But first, fans will need to register through their verified fan system. Okay, I'm doing research right now. Yeah, this is okay. I, so it, it's the 23rd and 24th, okay, NRG and Stadium. Uh, and Houston. if you, you go on StubHub right now, do you remember how much they start for? It was five hundred and fifty dollars. Five eighty four. Oh my god! For the cheapest. Oh. So, I guess if you want to go, if you want to spend five eighty four for one, good Her luck. Her performances are god phenomenal. Bless. Yeah, she has a just a, an inordinate amount of concert set up. It's crazy. She's going from like Amsterdam. Either way, all the info kset.com. But for now, time is eight fifty seven, forty three degrees out. We'll be right back. Yes, good morning. Coming up next, we're going to give you a close look of the Parsons Mounted Calvary and their role in the cattle drive. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned. All right, that was our Alyssa Cole. We could see what was going on where she was around, but take a look here. Fog has been a big part of the morning, but don't worry. We're going to check in with Mia Montgomery for your full forecast. For now, it is 9 o'clock. It is Saturday. It is February 4th. And good morning. Let's rodeo, San Antonio. I know. Today, the rodeo officially kicks off with the cattle drive at 11 a.m. Of course, we have team coverage up until then. And then we're going to be broadcasting that cattle drive. If you don't want to make it down there, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not a crowds person, you can watch it live right here. I'm like not look. I'm like looking at Max, but I'm not looking at. Are Max. you a crowds person? <laughs> okay, touche. <That's> <laughs> so me and Montgomery, the story of the morning, the fog is it going to be clear by 11 by 11 a.m. Visibilities are going to be improving. That is for sure. Yes, it has been just a very misty and foggy kind of gloomy start in and around South Central Texas this morning. Temperatures starting to warm, starting to see some of that cloud cover already break up. We're in the low 40s right now, so still a little bit of a chill in the air, but those temperatures will continue to warm into this afternoon as we still thaw things out following the cold, cold conditions that we saw throughout the first half of the week. But taking a look at current visibility in and around the San Antonio area, still just a quarter of a mile up in Bernie, still reporting virtually no visibility. New Braunfels, San Marcos up the I-35 corridor, even up in Kerrville up the I-10 corridor. So just be careful if you are planning on traveling this morning. We still do have that dense fog advisory that is in place for about another hour or so and it's just because those visibilities have been reduced but yes conditions will improve especially over the next couple of hours what's left of the cloud cover as well will continue to break up a bit more so as we head into this afternoon upper 50s low 60s that warming trend continues tomorrow and into monday and then we're looking at a front by the middle of next week with some rain chances which we'll talk about in just a few guys all right, thank you, Mia. Happening now, we are officially less than two hours away from the start of the annual Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive happening in downtown San Antonio. That's right. Alyssa Cole joins us there live. She's in the event area where crews are preparing. Alyssa, so how many people are expected to show up today? 
I mean, they're expecting thousands. Max is here right now. I am in the preparation area, as you mentioned. You can see our cattle longhorn friends here behind us. But joining me right now is the awesome Parsons Mounted Cavalry. We have their, one of their strong leaders, Maria Hall. She's joining us right now. They came in all the way from College Station to be a part of the cattle drive. Good morning, Maria. Tell me what you all's role is in today's cattle drive. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for having us today. Uh, we came all the way from College Station where Parsons Mounted Calvary. We have about 60 horses here today and about 70 calf jocks here and we represent the traditional Calvary element so we're super excited to be here. Yes, wonderful. We're excited to have you. We know the stock show and rodeo is such a big deal and I can tell that you're excited about it. What are you looking forward to the most in today's activities? Yes ma'am, just being able to to share this awesome space with all these other um, calf and equine lovers and just to show the public what we're all about. Wonderful. We're looking forward to it. Thank you so much, Maria, for being a part of this. We appreciate it. Everyone tuning in right now, 11 a.m., that's when the cattle run starts. Come on and be a part of this free event. But right now, I'm going to pass it to my friend, Jen Strusky. She's over at the Wrangler Breakfast. Take it away, Jen. Yes, thank you. Hope you're having fun over there. We're having a great time. I'm around the food. I have Sandy James here with me. We're at the Wrangler Breakfast at Milan Park. Now, this is very important to you, right? Tell me yes, why it is. is. Well, my grandfather did rode on uh, the actual cattle drives mm -hmm. back in the, I guess, 20s and 30s. So it's and kind of a memorial to him yes. and for the new generations to see that's how they used to live. Yes, and we talk about how they used to live. We have some of the pan de campo right here. So I'm going to go ahead and roll some of this out. So what, what's out. the tip to Like a tortilla. It? Okay, like a tortilla. Not too thin, not too not thick. Not too thick. How's that? Looking good. And how many batches are you making of this? I usually make about five batches, eight cups of flour to start with. So it's a, as, as you can see, a pretty big batch. And this Perfect. And that's what it looks like once it's cooked. So my and they're the cooking it back here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, back here. If you can see, it's cooking there. It tastes so good when it's warm. But you told me back in the day, they'd stick this in their pocket, eat it throughout in the day. In their saddlebag with their jerky or sausage or whatever they had mm -hmm. for the day. Mm -hmm and so delicious. By the way, this is free. So if you come out here, you can enjoy join us. coffee, pan de campo. We have biscuits and gravy too? Yes, ma'am. Biscuits and gravy. And you can see they're lining up right here. The stampede race just about finished, finishing up now. So people are coming, taking advantage, getting their coffee, their biscuits. Oh, can I see that? Look, look here, Richard. Biscuits, yes. Okay, I think I'm gonna get some of that. <laughs> I didn't mean to take your biscuits, they sorry. <laughs> they got biscuits about two and gravy, and so it's just and such then, a great time out here. And don't forget the Vaquero cook-off is over there at Market Square. We're gonna go check that out as well. Oh. Back to you guys. <laughs> Jen, you oh have- Oh my gosh, you just stole biscuits, Jen. I <laughs> love you. I love you for that. The best assignment <laughs> of the morning. Jen Tobias Dresky, you are a hero, hopefully, if we're nice enough, she'll bring some back. Biscuits, gravy, pan de campo. A, a cook off coming coffee. up too. That cook off is. Okay, do you? What do you dip in the coffee? Do you dip the biscuits in the? I'm gravy? gonna be honest. I don't dip anything in coffee. <laughs> I don't, what do you dip in coffee? Well, some pandos. But you, you throw some some gravy on the biscuits. Mm -hmm. That's how you start the morning. Yeah. And then you you have a side of breakfast tacos. I mean that that's the real. Way I guess cowboys do it. I just for us here. I at need <laughs> everyone who's live that can hear us just to be envious of Jen. Yes. Because I mean, she gets the, the food coverage in the morning. Not even David Elder got the food coverage in the morning. All okay. Right. Hey, but we're gonna check in with Mike Osterhage, who is out there on the parade route. Good morning, Mike and Fiona. Hey there! Yes, we are here at Houston and Jefferson, and still, you know, just a few hours away, of course, from you know, the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. And yes, like you were talking about, we are a little bit jealous that Jen is over there at the breakfast and then for the Avicara <laughs> cook-off. But yeah, we can't wait for all of the festivities down here and the people lying the streets a lot more mm -hmm. in just a couple of moments. All right, thank you guys so much. And they were bundled up, you know, they have the gloves on, the jackets. Mm -hmm. Mike, Mike, Mike was out. showing us the long johns underneath his yeah. shirt earlier. Uh, that's because it is still cold, 43 degrees out there now, but going to heat up not only today but for the rest of the week we're going to check back in with Mia in just a bit.
Good morning. Welcome back. Happy weekend. And hey, let's rodeo, San Antonio. That's right. Official rodeo week kicks off today at 11 a.m. for the cattle drive. And Mike and Fiona are going to be hosting it all morning long. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Hey, good morning. That's right. We are here at the corner of Houston and Jefferson, okay, where yeah, yeah, in yeah, less yeah. than two hours, yep. the parade is going to come on down Houston Street. And joining us right now is Chris Derby, Chief Marketing Officer with the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Happy good Rodeo. Morning. Good morning. Yeah, let's rodeo. We're ready to go. So the, the official kickoff to rodeo starts next Thursday. How long does it run? Then? Official kickoff. It'll run until the following Sunday, the February 26th. Okay. Right. What are some of the highlights that you always look forward to? Well, you know what? I love actually going to the fairgrounds. I love the family fair. I love seeing the dads with their kids on their shoulders, the moms hanging out and eating some of that great kettle corn or eating some of those corn dogs. And all the fried stuff. Too. All the fried stuff. Everything's fried. It's great. <laughs> and of course, it gives back, right? Yes, that's what the whole show's about. We are a nonprofit and it's a volunteer organization. And last week we gave away about $11.5 million in scholarships to the youth of Texas. How many years now for the rodeo? This is its 74th year, so wow. next year we'll be celebrating 75. So we're inviting the whole city to sell up, celebrate with us. That's fantastic. And there is literally something for everybody at the rodeo, be it some of the acts that are coming there. Uh, they, they range in all types of music, right? Correct. And, and even on the grounds, if you just go to the grounds, there's five music stages that you can see throughout the whole time. There's ag education events. There's going to be different shows. We have a BMX bike show this year that's going to be on the grounds that people can come on out and enjoy. And of course, the mutton bus. We call it busting in the bar. <laughs> just read my mind yes. because that's now pretty much open to, to anybody, right? Well, anybody, as long as you're yes, little. <laughs> yes, anybody between the age of four and seven under 55 pounds can sign up. You can sign up online right now at sarodeo.com and get your kid ready to go and you can be out there on the grounds and ride that sheep. And of course, a lot of fun activities planned even just for today, right? There's a lot of stuff. This is our 15th annual Western Heritage Parade. So we're so excited to bring it down. We got 45 head of Longhorns right how they used to do it back in the old days right on back down to the alamo which that i mean i don't know if people really grasp that that this is literally kind of living history because when they used to come down here how many you know 100 150 years ago yes it's, it's exactly what it is the only thing they have now is one-way signs so these got to make sure you go the right way when you're coming down <laughs> Houston you don't want to go the wrong way when you've got that many That's long exactly coming right. at i'm you. surprised they can find their way to the alamo honestly but it's good <laughs> uh, okay and of course jet device rescue will be over at the wrangler breakfast Correct. Yep. So there's a regular breakfast that takes place. Anybody can come on down. Then right after that, we got a Macaro cook-off. We're so excited to have everybody in San Antonio come on down and celebrate the official kickoff of the San Antonio Rodeo. And the great thing about the Macaro cook-off too, you can head on down there and get samples and maybe uh, get a couple of good recipes as well. And then the family fun day tomorrow. Definitely. Yeah. There, like I said, this whole weekend, it's a Western Heritage weekend for us. And we just really want to kick everybody off with the rodeo to get ready for next Thursday, February the 9th. I can't believe it's already here. And I'll tell you what, boy, glad we got the really cold stuff out of the way earlier in the week because this is in a perfect, perfect morning for this out here. Not too cold, just right. Just right. All right. And of course, a little less than two hours away. Yep. We're going to be closing off Houston Street and people are going to be aligning Houston Street here. Five, six, seven people need. Also, we're going to be giving away some tickets too. Mm -hmm. We've got a little bit of a uh, trivia quiz. Yeah, for those who are up. coming down, if yeah. you're going to be along the parade route, you could win some free tickets to the rodeo, maybe even some other freebies. But as Mike said, you've got to brush up on your rodeo trivia and history. So make sure you keep it, the channel tuned right where it is, or you can catch us online, kset.com, all of the streaming services. We will be here starting at 11 o'clock ring through noon, or if it takes longer than that, we may go a little bit longer too. <laughs> Guys. Thank you, Mike and Fiona. Okay, so rodeo trivia. I, I, still studying. I, I'm still I, studying. Yeah. We're making our way down there. And test. We'll get there. We'll get there. But Mike really underplaying the fact that it was still, you know, under 40 degrees this morning. He's like, it's perfect. It's not that yeah. bad. Yeah. For cowboy weather, you needed a little mm. chilly. And like, you know, you don't it's want it February. Hot. It's time of the rodeo. Sometimes we have a love-hate relationship with weather yeah. and, and when it comes to rodeo time. But yeah, today's not too bad, honestly, especially compared to earlier this week, also, as Mike was talking about. Looked also like in that shot, the sun was starting to come out. Take a look Look at this photo that was sent in through KSAT Connect earlier this morning here in San Antonio. It says there usually is a house over there. Yes, very, very foggy start across South Central Texas, but we are starting to see that low level cloud cover break up just a little bit more. That will be the trend as we head into this afternoon. More peaks of sunshine and even tomorrow as well. I do think we will find some morning fog, but more sun is in store as we get ready to wrap up our Sunday as well. Temperatures will continue to warm. 
We topped off in the 50s, a few low 60s across our western counties yesterday. Daytime highs this afternoon, upper 50s, low 60s tomorrow. How about upper 60s and low 70s for those daytime highs? We also do have some rain chances that move back in by Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. So right now we're in the 40s. Again, if you are stepping out for the cattle drive, we'll be around 50 degrees by 11 a.m. More sunshine this afternoon, a mix of sun and clouds at times, but overall daytime highs very comfortable. Upper 50s and low 60s out there later today. The humidity will continue to build tomorrow into Monday and even kick starting Tuesday of next week. So because of that, some additional areas of patchy fog, some of which could be dense in spots possible tomorrow morning. But after we see that break up, more sunshine, highs warming into the low 70s, low to mid 70s as we head into our Monday around 70 degrees by Tuesday of next week. Also will be a little breezy as we kick start the work week as well. And then we start to monitor those rain chances, an area of low pressure out in the Pacific that looks to track farther off to the southeast here over the next couple of days. And as it does so, it syncs up with that moisture that will be pumping back into our area. We'll call it a 30% potential for some rain, maybe an isolated thunderstorm Tuesday and into Wednesday. And then Thursday, kicking off things at the AT&T Center for the rodeo next week. Not looking too bad. Okay, so Sarah Coast was actually just explaining to me the dirt at the AT&T Center. It's the same dirt. So I found that out yesterday. I didn't know that either. And like, you know, I know what going to the rodeo. I learned it about three years ago when I did my first live shot. And what was your reaction? I said, oh my God, I'm old as dirt because I was the same oh age my goodness. as the dirt. There, okay. Well, done. well yeah. I was That's very fair. surprised. I didn't know that. All right, it's okay. time, <laughs> time now, 917, 44 degrees. Let's go out to David Elder at the parade. Good morning, David. Good morning, you guys. We are down here underneath the underpass once again. And with us right now, though, we have Ursula Perry and David Sears. How y'all doing? Good. Well, I'm helping to dress up the sheep here for the, <laughs> for the cattle drive. Yes. And we will be learning more about all the sheep, what you're doing over here. And you're actually going to be with the KSAT Insiders later for the parade. But we're going to be coming back here talking more with both of them. And you actually have a cattle dog with you right here, right, Sears? This is a, this is a sheep herder dog. Sheep herder dog. She's uh, enjoying the petting part. Yeah. She's like, ah, it's, my, it's a Saturday. I'm supposed to be off today. That's right. Sears thinks it's a petting zoo over here, which is fine. That's okay. But we have a lot more coming up out here in just a little bit, plus talking about the new episode of Texas Eats that starts at 10 o'clock this morning right here on KSAT 12. But I tell you what, it is warming up. It's getting nice outside. We're super excited. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy weekend and what an exciting time in and around San Antonio. That's right, because we're kicking off Rodeo Week at 11 a.m. with the cattle drive. And that's where we find David Elder, who has found some real life cowboys of David Sears and cowgirl Ursula Perry. <laughs> yes, we, we stumbled upon them down here, walking around, trying to find their way to the buggies, because you guys are going to be in the Western Heritage Braden Cattle Drive with the KSAT Insiders at 11 o'clock today, so make sure you're tuning in or you come down to watch live. But tell me about how excited you are for this event and to be joining it with the KSAT Insiders. This is fun, and we've already met some of them. They're, they're on their way to the wagon right now. We're going to be uh, carrying signs and hoofing and hollering. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a blast. Now, Sears, you're actually going to be on Texas Eats today. We have a segment together, which, Ursula, you're no stranger to Texas Eats. You've been on before as well. How did he cook? <laughs> well, I mean, cooking is a stretch of a word. He's preparing sandwiches for us. It's a segment called Sandwiches with Sears, and it's a secret today. You have to watch and find out what he's going to make for us, but you've already made two sandwiches for us already. You made the peanut butter and jelly, and then you made your banana and peanut butter, and that technique is superb. The way you mash the peanut butter with the bananas, it's really good. It was very impressive. Did you know, I did not know this, but did you know, most people know who Tiger Woods is. You know what his sandwich of choice is when he's out playing 18 holes of golf? It is the peanut butter and banana sandwich. We That's were his. We're waiting any minute now for the John Beard Award. <laughs> the James Beard. James Beard Award. <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait till today. Wait till you see the PB and J taken to a whole new level today. Yeah, you know what though? I think I think Sears would get the John Beard Award. I think John your career. Beard. You're right. Yeah, you're <laughs> right. Yeah. Faux beard. <laughs> <laughs> now, right behind us, we have some sheep, and I saw. I mean, and once again, both of you guys. Yeah. Decorate them for the for the parade. You're for trying. The <laughs> 
They are not having any no. of this. And both of you are, are actually no stranger, again, to cattle, livestock. I mean, Ursula, you do everything with the Polo Association here in San Antonio. And Sirius, you actually, you, you work on ranches. You've had ranches. You've you got family and oh, stuff yeah. like that, right? I got lots of ranches. No, I have He's actually, he's a ranch king out here. No. Yeah. Right now well. he's picking up frozen branches on his ranch. Yeah. Oh, it's not, a, it's more like a ranchette. It's a ranch. It's a ranch. Okay. Texas with a couple of horses on it, but yeah. we enjoy it. Now, I mean, you were back here kind of petting them, talking to all the sheep and everything. So we're going to let you guys get back to it. Go ahead and go make friends with them again. Try to get them decorated and looking pretty for the parade. Did you know there's a goat among the sheep? <laughs> yeah. There's a goat in sheep's clothing out here. It's snuck in there. Yes. But we're going to toss it back to y'all back in the studio. We're going to keep having fun. Yeah, they call me Rip out here. <laughs> this is just impressive. Very impressive interview. I would like for this to be the rest of the show. Yeah, I think we need an entire uh, show. We need an entire uh, Texas uh, Eats devoted to just that interview. Yes, let's keep it going. None of which had anything to do with the Western Heritage Parade, but no. it was good entertainment. No, it was great entertainment. I got to try one of David Sears' sandwiches now. Who knew he and was the, a John Beard Award winner? Yeah, John Beard, <laughs> Beard Award winner. But the second he said that, I was like, that is not a thing. That's Time not now. it, but wait, it's a thing now. 925, 44 degrees out. After the break, We'll check out what's going on KSAT.com. That's before more parade coverage coming up at 930. Good morning. Welcome back. A lot going on on KSAT.com. It is the beginning of February, and that starts the countdown to Valentine's Day. There's a unique experience if you're looking for still a date for that special someone. Just head to the San Antonio Zoo. They are offering a special Wild at Heart dinner. It's a four course gourmet meal alongside the zoo's hippos, Timothy and Uma on Valentine's Day. During dinner, you will learn about the two hippos and the team who cares for them. You must be 21 and over for um, times and VIP options and in order to book a table, just head to our website, ksat.com. Time now, 928, 44 degrees. All right, let's go out to Alyssa Cole, who is live. What's coming up at 930, Alyssa? Yes, coming up next, we get a chance to go behind the scenes and personally meet one of the cattle, a part of the cattle run. Stay tuned. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Saturday, 932 this morning. It is February 4th. Also, mm. guess what it is today, Max? What is it? It is the kickoff to the San Antonio Rodeo with the cattle drive. And if you haven't been watching, it's been a crazy fun morning. <laughs> it has been so much fun. So much going on. We'll be checking out with the entire team, including Mia. So, Mia, we were dealing with a lot of fog this morning. Is it starting to dissipate a little bit? It is. And Woo! that is the good news. We're going to continue to see that trend throughout the remainder of the morning. And then more peaks of sunshine expected as we head into this afternoon. Let's get you another look outside with live cam. You can see some blue sky and some more sunshine starting to peek through there as well. That's all going to contribute to that warming trend that we've been talking about over the past couple of days following the cold, cold start that we had earlier this week. If you liked yesterday's temperatures, I think you're going to like today and we're even going to warm things up even more so as we head into our Sunday. So right now we're in the 40s here in San Antonio, 41 at Randolph, 43 at Kelly, 41 on the south side over at Stinson, 44 over at SA International. Still do have some pockets of dense fog in place. Kerrville, Bernie stretching over to Uvalde out there down Highway 90. But here in San Antonio, for the most part, over the past 30 minutes, we've really started to see those visibility values improve. And again, that will be the trend here over the next couple of hours. We will start to see the remainder of that cloud cover break up a bit more as well. Daytime highs this afternoon, upper 50s, low 60s tomorrow upper 60s, low 70s. So we'll get you a full look at that weekend forecast. Plus talk about some rain chances next week in just a few guys. Thank you, Mia. A beautiful day for the cattle drive that's kicking off at 11 a.m. That's right. We've been checking in with so many team members, full team coverage, and of course, Alyssa Cole kicking us off. So, Alyssa, we hear you're hanging out with some horses. Who are Aggies. Yes. Yes, that's right. Yes, it's the cavalry from Texas A&M. They are just an awesome group. So kind. We do have a special guest here. You all remember Maria Hall. She spoke to us during our last live hit, and she brought a special friend. Um, but 
I've been with all these horses for about two years. Wonderful. And right now, it looks like you all are preparing. I see the different saddles. And oh, well, well, I'm being told to wrap it up. So actually, Maria, thank you again for being a part of this. We wish you all the best in today's cattle run. And we wish you the best after graduating from Texas A&M. Now, when we send it back to you, Max and Sarah, are you all ready for today? Hope you all coming down. <laughs> Thank you, Alyssa. We'll be checking in with so many more teammates throughout the morning. But for now, big update in Comal County. The lights are slowly coming back on. Right now, PEC outage map shows a little less than 1,900 homes and businesses in the area still do not have power. It sounds like a lot. It is a lot, but technically it's still an improvement. Remember, less than 48 hours ago, 4,000 homes and businesses were still in the dark. And still, many PC customers obviously frustrated with that lack of power and even more so lack of answers. So this neighborhood outside of Spring Branch lost power mid-afternoon on Wednesday. Some neighbors there say they've missed work and spent a lot of their money to keep a generator running. Others tell us they were not able to get any help from PC. I have tried calling every day and it has stayed busy. I can't get through. They won't answer the emails. My husband actually said, you know, we understand y'all are busy. We understand there's thousands of people out of power, but I mean, at least cooperate with us or communicate with us and let us know what's going on via automated email system. So PEC tweeted out earlier Friday that there's substantial damage to the system from downed lines and poles. And while it said in a statement that it hoped to have most of the power restored overnight, it warned that some of the restoration efforts could last well into the weekend. Well, the San Antonio Zoo, obviously a staple of family-friendly fun around the Alamo City, and there are big changes on the way. That is why tomorrow on Leading SA at 8 a.m., tomorrow, CEO of the San Antonio Zoo joining us live. We're going to be talking about the new improvements at the zoo, new exhibits, things opening this spring, and, of course, the timetable of when we can see these new experiences. If you have any questions that you would like to ask, you can do so right now. Just head to the Leading Essay section of KSAT.com, submit the questions, and then join us for our full conversation tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. In about two weeks, KSAT will be hosting a community town hall with local experts and healthcare professionals weighing in on heart health. So to tune in for that, it happens on the 16th of February at 2 p.m. on KSAT.com. And you can join in the, on the conversation. If you have any questions you would like to have answered, you can submit them to KSAT.com in the KSAT community section. For now, time is 937, 43 degrees out. Still ahead, we're celebrating the first weekend of Black History Month. We'll look at events that are going on, plus a spotlight on HBCU students and their partnership with Target. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. All right, so we're starting to see that fog dissipate, move away. We're starting to see the temps rise. A welcome sight since all the winter weather we had this week. We're going to check in with Mia Montgomery in just a few moments. Well, this morning marks the first weekend of Black History Month, and communities are offering plenty of ways to celebrate. February is federally recognized. It's a time to honor the contributions and achievements of African Americans. Carter Woodson created a week dedicated to black history in 1926. It expanded to a month 50 years later. Woodson says that he chose February to honor black history because of two notable birthdays falling in February. Early civil rights leader Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln both have birthdays this weekend. Places across the weekend, across the country, are offering events or a chance to visit related ongoing exhibits. One example, the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture. They're marking the 200th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation. They're displaying early copies of the document. The National Constitution Center in Philadelphia also hosting special events throughout the month. And a computer science student in Georgia is now partnering with Target. It all started with a design to support Black History Month. Cadence Patrick is a sophomore at Spelman College and is already making a name for herself in the world of graphic design. She's one of the three HBCU students across the country whose designs are featured in Target's Black History Month collection. Cadence's winning creation depicts a young black man holding a glowing orb that reads black futures are bright. Her 17 year old brother was the inspiration. My brother, he's one of the most like kind and like creative people I know. And so I just thought I want people like him, I want like, you know, young black kids um, to see that and think like, yeah, my future is bright. I can't, I can do whatever I want. 
So she digitally drew the design using an app on her iPad. It's now on t-shirts, a baby's onesie, and journal products available in Target stores and online. That what a story. Also cool. cool for her little brother. It's like, yeah, that's me in the t-shirt, by the way. I'm the inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. All right, so speaking of inspiration, the sun coming out, bringing us a little inspiration There's today. some inspo. I'd say after the week that we had, yes, we are definitely we need it. very appreciative of the sunshine. I know we were talking within the KSAT weather team on our text message group yesterday. Sarah Spivey. Isn't this sunshine amazing? <laughs> and I was like, I've never been so happy to see sun before in my entire life. Absolutely. Yes, temperatures already warming out there this morning, and that's going to be the case throughout the remainder of the day and really into the second half of the weekend as well. Really quickly want to touch on our pollen count for this Saturday. Molds are low, mountain cedar is low. So not a bad way to kick off the weekend's plans. You can see more of that sun now on live cam. Again, visibility is improving. That'll be the trend that we find over the next couple of hours. 46 now over at San Antonio International. Still upper 30s up in the Kerrville area. That's where some of that cloud cover and a little bit more of that fog is in place as well. 41 in New Braunfels, 46 down in Kennedy, 45 in Del Rio, 45 in Catula as well here as we get ready to approach the 10 a.m. hour. Now temperatures will continue to warm as we head into the afternoon. What is left of that cloud cover will break up just a little bit more so we will find some sunshine this afternoon as well. That's going to help daytime highs for the most part top off in the upper 50s, low 60s. And then if you're stepping up for any Saturday evening plans later today after the sun goes down, we'll see those thermometers fall into the 50s. So temperatures turning cool for some of those Saturday evening plans. That warming trend that we've been talking about. Yes, that continues for the back half of the weekend. While earlier this morning we woke up to the 30s across the good portion of the area tomorrow we'll start off in the mid 40s here in San Antonio upper 60s low 70s for those daytime highs high pressure for the most part has been in control yesterday and today but as we take a look farther off to the northwest south of Alaska approaching the Pacific Northwest there's a little dip in the jet stream that is an area of low pressure that is essentially our next weather maker that's going to move farther down to the southeast here over the next several days by Sunday afternoon. So tomorrow afternoon, it's approaching the Rockies, starting to spark some snow across the higher elevations out that way. No snow in store for us here in South Central Texas by Monday night. That low pressure system approaching the desert southwest. Now here's the thing over the next couple of days, what we're going to find is some additional Gulf moisture that's going to pump in. So the humidity is going to build with that moisture in place and the energy associated with that low pressure system, that's when we could see our next chance for some widely scattered showers start to pop up. So Tuesday and into Wednesday, we'll call it about a 30% potential here in San Antonio. We'll keep eyes on that over the next few days. So definitely check back in. I did mention that building humidity. So especially by Monday, we'll start to see those dew points increase as that Gulf moisture pumps back into the area. It does so via a breezy south wind. So by Monday, we could essentially find some wind gusts upwards of 25 to even 30 miles per hour, around 25 mile per hour wind gusts possible into Tuesday and into the early portions of our Wednesday as well. Along with those rain chances that move in by the middle of next week, that also is associated with our next front. So temperatures drop a little bit behind the passage of that boundary. Not too bad though. Upper 50s, low 60s looking great at the AT&T Center next Thursday for the events to kick off out that way. Until then, it's just going to be a really nice weekend. Some patchy fog possible again tomorrow morning, but the sunshine's going to be with us in the afternoon. Beautiful. 71 tomorrow, 74 on Monday. There it is. And then Thursday, I mean, for the kickoff rodeo, 68 degrees. It's looking pretty nice right Beautiful. now. Beautiful. It really is. It's Thank you, Mia. You bet. Mia, time now, 947, 45 degrees out. Let's go out to Alyssa Cole. It's a preview of what's coming up. Good morning, Alyssa. Yes, coming up next, the big preparation underway for the Cattle Run and the Western Heritage Parade. Be sure to stay tuned. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy weekend. And hey, let's rodeo, San Antonio. That's right. The rodeo is kicking off today at 11 a.m. with the Cattle Drive. And that's where we find our Alyssa Cole. Good morning. 
Yes, good morning, Max, Sarah. You all, I've just had such a blast down here, met so many wonderful people. What you all see behind me right now is the Parsons Mounted Calvary. It's the only collegiate cavalry in the United States. They've come all the way down from College Station. They're part of Texas A&M. So go Aggies, I believe. That's what I hear people saying. Let me take a step aside and move out the way for the cattle run. You all like what I did there? You can see that they're all mounted right now, looking great, prepared. They're ready to be a part of this huge cultural event and I've been asking them hey you know why are you excited to be a part of this cattle run this uh, western uh, parade this western cultural celebration parade and they say it's just great to be a part of a Texas tradition this Lone Star State and celebrate some of the beautiful uh, treasured uh, practices that come with it and they're just happy that they get to use their life skills that they've learned together over the time being a part of the cavalry and be a, be a part of something like this this very tight-knit community celebration family event again everybody who's tuning in right now if you're considering doing something this Saturday well consider coming on downtown the cattle run will be starting at 11 a.m. and it'll be happening right down Houston Street like it does annually every year this is a free event so if you are considering coming out you want to do so and if you get a chance to see the cavalry as they march and strut down the street these beautiful horses and their mounted persons on top you won't regret it it would be a very very nice time max sarah all right Alyssa, thank you so thank much you. having fun out there our whole team's having fun out there i was personally jealous of jen because she gets to hang out with all the food yeah so okay so jen was at the wrangler breakfast mm -hmm. uh you know Alyssa is at the star and david elder where is David Elder this time? We saw earlier he was out there with Ursula and David Sears. Oh, we found the food. <laughs> Y'all, I actually made my way to the food. I, I followed my nose out here. I'm at Market Square. It's a hop and a skip away from where I was at earlier. And we're here at the Volcano Cook-Off. We're gonna be talking with two individuals who are participating this year. One of them's a grand champion. And we're gonna be finding out what they're cooking up and see if I can get some food, because I'm hungry. I know Ben's hungry too. So we're gonna try to get something out here. But more of that right after the break, y'all. Good morning, welcome back. Happy Saturday. Not as happy as David Elder, because he, he's got one of the best spots uh, in the morning. Of course he does. He always finds his way to the food. David, we're very jealous. You know what? I was jealous that I wasn't around the food, so I found my way over here, and now we're at Market Square. Look who we found! It's Jan Strisky. How you doing? Of course you're where the food is, David. <laughs> I mean, I was just scoping it out, but what do you have there? This is a carne asada taco. You have a little bit of green salsa on there, and it's made for my man, Ruben Perez. Ruben, how's it going, man? Pretty good, pretty good. Just here getting ready. I got for all competition. The Vaquero Cook-Off is a big deal. I know there's, it's a very competitive circuit. You see a lot of cooks out here. You're making one item. Are you guys making carne asada? Are you making different stuff as well? We're making pastor, menudo, then, then we're turning the arroz con pollo and a chili. Chili con carne. All right, which one would be your favorite? Um, I, I love chili, but I'm, I'm excited about arroz con pollo because it's new this year. I might steal your taco, though. <laughs> oh, oh, no! <laughs> Okay, so now my taco has been stolen. It's okay, as you can see. Oh, like Jen's going for it. Okay, how how is it? Okay, good. Okay, we got the seal of approval here. Now, I see you got a lot more, so I'm gonna come back. I want to see what you're doing over here. I have to get another taco, Jen. Thanks for stealing my taco. That's I'll be right back here. We're gonna go talk now with a gentleman, Rob Sizzle. Rob Sizzle, how you doing, sir? Hey, I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Now you're. Grand champion, is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, team 210, been grand champion uh, 2022 and then also <laughs> 2019. Wow, so multiple grand champion. You got the other belt. <laughs> You're, he's always showing off his belt buckles out here. Now, you got some food cooking out here, but this is a family affair, right? You have your mom with you, is that correct? Absolutely, yes, I do. My mom right here, this, this is the one who taught me everything, so without her... There would be no Rob Sizzle. This is my mother, Sally. So, hi, Mom Sizzle. Is that correct? Uh, yes, Mom Sizzle. How are you? I'm doing well. Now, you're cooking up a storm over here. Did he get some of these recipes from you? Uh, some. Some. <laughs> I'm doing the arroz con pollo. Oh, so it is a family affair. All right, you guys are cooking it up. Now, I see you got a lot of stuff going on over here. Some stuff kind of in the mid-process of being prepared. Absolutely. Is there something that I can try? Can I take a taste of anything you got? You know what? Uh, 
since you're here in the morning, I can make you a breakfast taco. It's our staff food right now. So. All right, make me a breakfast taco. I appreciate it, brother. I'm going to take a bite. So you do your thing. I'm going to talk to the people at home. You guys, we have a brand new episode of Texas Eats coming up at 10 o'clock, so make sure you stay tuned. Plus, during the show, make sure you're writing down the secret word. It's a seven-letter secret word for your chance to win a family four-pack of tickets to the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. I'm so excited for that giveaway. Plus, brand new restaurants from all across San Antonio and surrounding areas. And we're so excited to share them with you because they are all outstanding. A ramen spot that is one of my favorites. A new Italian restaurant on the far northwest side of San Antonio. So many great bites. But I tell you what, nothing's better than the food that's right in front of you, brother. Great timing, my friend. Look at this taco. Now, I'm going to take a bite of this, and then I'm going to send it back over to you guys there at the station. But I tell you what, this thing looks absolutely insane. I got to put the mic down, though. I got you. That looks very good. Yeah. Uh, we didn't we even get, get to see the butt. Yeah, no. right. Also, That's just a power bike. move by David Elder. <laughs> hey, yeah, like, make me a taco. Make me a taco. <laughs> Please. Bring us tacos, I, David, I'm come starving. On. All of that food looks so good. Okay, quick check at our temperatures. Warming nicely in the 40s for a good portion of the area. Still some upper 30s across the hill country. Look at those visibilities here in Bear County, especially seeing those numbers come up. That is the good news. Those pockets of dense fog starting to break up. It still do have some hindered visibility across portions of the hill country as well. We'll keep eyes on that. It's more sunshine this afternoon. Highs in the low 60s tomorrow, low 70s. And then we'll monitor for some chances for rain as we head to the middle of next week. Awesome. Oh, not okay. excited about the rain, excited about the 70s and sunny. And All right, we have tacos. the cattle Starbucks. drive kicking off at 11 a.m. You can watch it live here on mm -hmm. KSAT and also KSAT.com. But next is David Elder's Texas Eats. Have a great day.